How do you feel mm -hmm. about reading a book where our main character is a serial killer? <laughs> What a first question. Oh, my God. But the love interest is the FBI agent oh who's trying gosh. to find her, I guess. Or detain her. Wouldn't it be say. funny if I was just like, serial killer? Okay. FBI agent. Ugh. <laughs> Uh, no. you, you lost me there. Can he be anything else? <laughs> I don't want to reveal how I feel about this book. Do you know how I feel? No, I have no idea. I don't know how you feel about it either. Um, I, e we both like this one anime called Death Note. Mm -hmm. And one thing that I dislike, I think Death Note did it well. One thing that I dislike is when a crime is trying to be like justified in a story. Mm. And if it's justified, but everyone else around them is like, fuck you crazy, then okay. that's fine with me. But like a, a whole story, if it just centers around people going like, you know what? Bitch got a point. <laughs> Bitch got a point. Then I get kind of like, oh. Do you feel like it's unrealistic? If yes. everyone is on the side of the serial killer? Yes, I do. Okay, but the cast knew about our serial killer's struggle. Let's let's just say that. Even if we knew the struggle a serial killer went through, there was a line that was said in this story, and that we'll get to it when we talk more about it. But with people who kill for revenge, the the reason it's so dangerous is because they themselves become the judge and the executioner, mm -hmm. which is a very dangerous thing. I think we read a book that said that too, Confessions by Kanae Minato. Mm -hmm. That's a very dangerous thing to become because who gives you the right to do that? Like right. why, why does it fall on your shoulders? That's the reason we have like a system for crimes because right. if it falls to one person, then that person gets overpowered and... Wouldn't you say the system's flawed, though? Of course it is. Of course. <laughs> anyway, it is, I but... think we're derailing a little bit because this is not where I I'm thought not... this conversation was gonna go. I'm anyway, sorry. I was gonna say, did you want a spicy yeah, romance <laughs> where? Be the... I'm sorry. Before we get political here, do you want to read spice? Do you want to read? <laughs> do you want to read some spice, maybe? Please, I could talk about this book all freaking night. Well, I'm excited because. First of all, welcome to the Book Fix Podcast. I'm your host, Jehida. And I'm your host, Shelly. We are going to be finally talking about the Mind Book series, series, which was written by S.T. Abby. This series, re series really blew up on Book Talk. And I feel like on Instagram bookstagram as well mm -hmm. i feel like for a minute there i just kept seeing everybody talking about it so we're really late on this but it's fine <laughs> we're here now i feel i i knew we were gonna get to it eventually mm -hmm. but i think it's convenient that this book is comprised of novellas yeah dude i i was go going through this book and i didn't know that there was i knew there was five novellas but i thought they were all just together in one mm -hmm. kindle unlimited thing like one download uh -huh. so i was like there's like 15 20 pages left and it doesn't seem like this book is ending anytime soon yeah it was so funny because chelly texted me and she was like mm. I have questions. <laughs> <laughs> like, how much are we reading? And then when I got to the end, because you told me, like, you'll know when the story is over. Mm -hmm. When I got to the end, I was like, yeah, there's more. <laughs> the story is not over. There is way more. But um, our story follows our main girl, whose name is Lana. Lana. All right. Not, <laughs> not, not that Lana. Not that Lana. I was thinking about Lana... Con. Lana Condor? Isn't she the one who came out in To All the Boys? Oh, yes. I think that is. I think okay, that is. thank God. Because I'm not really good with remembering names. But basically, the start of the book is mm -hmm. Lana. She's mm -hmm. kind of like scoping, scoping out, right? She's at a bar? She's at a coffee shop. Oh, it's just coffee shop? That's lame. She's at a coffee mm -hmm. shop. And then someone tries hitting on her and she's just like not into him oh. at all. She's like yeah. grossed out. Gave, him, gave her the ick. 
And then this guy's friend is really amused by this. So amused that he paid for her dinner. No, it was mm-hmm. dinner. I paid for her cupcake and coffee. Right. And so yeah. she got offended by that. She was like, I don't need you to pay for my food. Like, that's weird. Yep. And so it, it to me, it was interesting how they were both like, they're both really good at reading other people, basically. And so she was like, oh, I know that you're this type of guy because of the pants you're wearing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. it's like little things that our love interest, whose name is Logan, was wearing or doing or saying she immediately was like oh i know exactly the type of person that you are but then in that first interaction too he was like you're scared of people knowing you too well you are scared of committing to anyone because you are afraid that you don't feel that anymore you don't know how to feel anymore in this nice to meet you Mm -hmm. and leaves and she's over here like about to cry and this is lana who has never cried Uh in a very long time Mm -hmm. so she's like holy shit yeah and the guy, Logan, ended up leaving his card and was like, huh, call me, mm-hmm. call me. Mm-hmm. How did you feel? First interaction. Uh, Insta love, did you feel the sparks? <laughs> I think it's a little weird how much they were reading on each other. But then again, I'm not that type of person. I'm really oblivious. I cannot tell you mm-hmm. anything about a person based on their appearance. Well, it's like... Someone's like, hi, how are you? And you're like, I think this person's talking to me. <laughs> I'm not sure, though. No, I hear not more. like that. I mean, like, like the type of person they are. Yeah, like who they actually are. Yeah. I mean, sure, maybe I'll get some clues. But the way that they were talking to each other, it was like, oh, I know your character. So to kind of answer that, Logan is an FBI agent who his whole job is profiling people. Mm-hmm. So he needs to be able to. Think how people think to understand why they murdered someone or who the killer is Mm -hmm. or anything like that. And with him, because he's married to his job, he can't stop doing that even outside of his job. Mm -hmm. And and he has said that this has ended a lot of his all of his relationships Mm -hmm. with people because it's like he's always on call. So he's always on call. And then he's calling them out for their the way they act yeah and women don't like that so he's like "Eh," kind of explains that but i find it interesting that he's so good at reading people because he's an fbi agent and she's so good at reading people because she's a serial killer Mm -hmm. so i think that's interesting and immediately after they meet she goes and kills someone yeah literally she's just like all right brutal dude Mm -hmm. i trigger warning yeah trigger warning because this book is Full of triggers. So I'm not going to go into detail yet, but what they had told us by this point is she is basically going around and killing people from a list that she formed of people that have wronged her and her brother. Mm -hmm. We don't know where her brother is. We just know that's what has happened. Mm -hmm. And so she meets this guy and she's like, do you remember who I am? Because I am not dead. You know, and she she never tells them her name. She just repeats things that were said to her that night of the whole traumatic thing that happened. Mm-hmm. And we don't know what that is yet. And when they figure out who she is, uh, she just goes like, OK, well, you did not help me for three days. So you owe me three pounds. Yeah. And they will like cut off flesh until uh, yeah. three pounds are collected. And she drags it out for like weeks because she doesn't want it to be a quick Mm -hmm. death she wants them to really know who she is and to remember what they did to her and you know what's something i liked about this book Mm. i liked although i didn't agree with what she did Mm. i liked that our character never swayed like she although people around her were like you need to stop this you could stop this it's done you don't need to you don't need to keep going and she's like no i do Because it shows that there was no remorse for what she was doing. Mm -hmm. She had to do it. So in her mind, she just did it. I feel like, yeah. Yeah, I agree with you. But I feel like it was also because of the trauma and what happened. Mm -hmm. I don't think she really felt like she had anything to lose. No, and she had no one in her life. She had Jake. Yeah, but to her, it's like... And this is something that's voiced later by Jake, which is her best friend who is connected to her through this traumatic experience as well, Mm because it affected him as well. And we don't know yet why. Mm -hmm. But um, 
even Jake voices later that he's scared that when they're done with murdering all these people, that she would give up living. Yeah, because that's literally like her motivation to get up every single day. That's crazy. Mm. So like it it was a weird I I had no idea what this book was gonna be about. I saw the cover, which on it oh what's the cover again? It's the literally like a ma- lady's ass. The cover makes it seem like it's just spice. Right? I looked at it and like all of the covers though. I thought the mind fuck like the, the name of it, I thought it was gonna be more so like this guy is messing with her head because she can't get him out of his head or yeah. like something like that. And then it's just super, super spicy. I already knew what the story was about. I didn't know like details, but mm-hmm. I knew that it was a serial killer and that he was an FBI agent. I did not. So but when I went I into this, I was so like, what the fuck am I reading? Yeah. So the fact that this FBI agent reaches out or no, he gets a call from her. Mm hmm. And she's completely flirty and they're like, are we doing this? Mm-hmm. Like, you know, and they go out for coffee. It hella threw me off because she's over here having moments where she's super like, oh, the darkness inside of me, my soul. <laughs> and like, oh my God. Baby. Yeah. So she's allowing herself to fall in love, which I felt like could have been done a little bit better. I don't know. Like, to me, it's weird that she allowed him in so easily. But even she was confused on why she did that, right? Yeah, yeah, but I feel, I don't know. Like, I feel like their first interaction was cute, but it wasn't, like, super memorable. It wasn't like, damn, this man gets me. But I kind of like it because it kind of became what their whole relationship was, which was, like, I want to be there with you. And you can tell both of them kind of already felt like that. Like, oh, my God, this person can be my everything. Mm Mm-hmm. But my life is so busy. And at that point, you can see that both of their lives are busy. And they both kind of just go like, well, if you're willing to be that person Mm -hmm. to like be part of my busy schedule. And it was funny because he made a comment. It's like, I really hate it. But I feel like with our when we meet up, it'll be when I text you randomly like you free. Yeah. Like, are you okay with that? And she was like, yeah, because I I don't have anything. (laughs) But it's funny because she's always busy also. Mm -hmm. And her schedule is really weird too. And and she's she makes up excuses like, Oh, my job takes me out of town sometimes and I'm hard to reach in certain times, but And her job, according to her, is she trades goods. Yeah. And she uh goes to the places to pick up the goods to trade them. Mm. And uh she has a partner, which is Jake, but she never says the partner's name. Mm -hmm. And that's just her whole thing. And it's like to me, if I was an FBI agent, I think I would have been like, how do you make money from that? Yeah. How do you it's, live with that? It's weird that he's supposedly so good at his job when he doesn't see any anything with her. Well, he was like crazy for her, dude. I because- know, but like there were certain things. Things that happen where I was like, you're not getting any red flags from this. But remember, she there would be moments where he would catch it, but then he'd be like, no, but in a relationship, I got to take a step back. <laughs> yeah, she came home bloody. But what if her period was just all over? <laughs> like, No, but even the, even the excuse that she gave him, though, was so like mm-hmm. weird. The paint one? Is that what you're thinking of? Yeah, she said something about paint, but then he was like, I don't believe you. And then she was like, okay, J- Jake was bleeding and I don't know how it got on my blood, hair. Blood in my hair. I yeah. was like, I feel like this doesn't really make sense. And then when he was like, why would you lie to me when you could have just told me? And she was like, oh, you were already weird about Jake and whatever. And he let it go. Mm. Like, it's so... Yeah. But I think it's kind of great as well. Because, mm-hmm. like, it's so funny being the reader and seeing both sides. Mm-hmm. And then she does shit. Where it's like, oh, here's my big murder knife. I guess I'm going to put it here. Go do something. Better put it away. And then he comes in and it's like, you could have fucking seen that. Yeah. And I was so stressed out for her. I was like, bitch, don't just leave your murder room open. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like also the murder room. I don't know. I felt like she wasn't that careful. No. And she was kind of just like, eh, whatever. Even if too, like the, the murder room that she had was four bookshelves, empty bookshelves mm-hmm. in a blank room. And then if you pulled it, it was a secret door. Mm-hmm. And it's like, you didn't even bother to make it look like a room. Like, Why? if someone were to walk in. They would be like, mm. this is my four 
bookshelf empty bookshelf room. <laughs> <laughs> this is one of the best acoustics. <laughs> this is where I come to scream. <laughs> it's where I come to be Lana. But, oh, God. I thought it was cute, though, because they kept texting after their first date. And then he just wrote, like, oh, I should have kissed you. Mm. And she was like, she was like, God damn it, why didn't you? Would have you? saved me from that awkward wave. Because they had, after the date, they didn't hug. So she just stood in front of him and waved. Uh huh. I was like, oh, God. I don't know how I felt about this. I Why don't we talk more about the plot? I feel like we shouldn't talk too yeah. much about specifics. Well, then, to move the plot forward, in the first book, the biggest issue is that one of the cases that he's unable to solve is the case of the boogeyman. Mm-hmm. And this, the reason this case is so big is because it's a known case. And he talks about that when a case goes out to the public, he hates it because they usually give the case like the serial killer gets a, a, a nickname mm-hmm. and people follow it. And mm-hmm. it's just really, it's tough. So he's dealing with that case as well as an unsub case. Mm -hmm. doesn't know who the killer is has not gone to the public and this is hers this is lana's case yeah but he's more concerned about this one because for some reason there's someone going around who is r wording a bunch of women and um is leaving them in very gruesome poses Mm -hmm. and he actually because he's dating lana around this time she sees the case open on his table while he's taking a shower and because he, she had already read it, she w- he was like, what, what do you think? Mm-hmm. Like, what's, what do I do? Mm-hmm. And she brought up like, oh, he's custodial. You could totally tell he's custodial because of the way he cleaned the, the murder scene or whatever. And then automatically she was right. Yeah. And it was someone who was custodial. If I were in his position, I would ask more questions. Like, I would be like, why why do you think he's custodial? And how did you know he was custodial? But she answered. Because she was like, yeah, my my dad was friends with a janitor. Don't you have your janitor bestie? Mm, I I have a janitor bestie. I actually do. Yeah, I have a janitor bestie. (laughs) Um, I don't know. Like, to me, it's kind of weird when involving, like, your girlfriend in this case and then her being right. I don't know. Also, if I were him, because immediately he calls his workplace, I think he calls Hadley, Mm -hmm. and he tells her, like, all of the, what he figured out, and then he's like, oh, yeah, it's thanks to my girlfriend. Shout out to my girlfriend. If I worked in the FBI and I heard that, I'd be like... I'm not taking it seriously, then. Why are you talking about a case with your girlfriend? Yeah. Like... But also, she's not qualified. Yep. But then when she got it right, wouldn't that make more people like aware of her? Well, it did. It made Hadley aware of her mm-hmm. because basically this boogeyman guy um, figured out that he was now being watched and figured out that he was being watched specifically by Logan. So he started to like fuck with Logan, mm-hmm. like by doing a bunch of like weird shit mm-hmm. before that, though. <laughs> the first book ends with Hadley, which is one of the um one of the coworkers of Logan going to Lana's house and being like, "Can you tell me why hmm. you you have a dead girl's name?" Yeah. And, and Lana's Oh yeah, yeah, but I think it was explained in this book, no, why she had her name. Yeah, so whatever incident she went through was so traumatic and it involved her brother her younger brother who in this incident also like died and she was supposed to die but she was just completely like messed up um whatever had happened had messed her up so much physically that she had to get a bunch of surgery to reconstruct her body she Mm -hmm. says that she has a bunch of metal plates in her face because of how bad it was but coincidentally she went through that the same day someone else had a horrible car crash and, and died and died and her name was lana and so basically no, her name was kennedy something oh yes it was kennedy yeah and then she switched her name right so she took kennedy's identity um all of the inheritance that kennedy was going to get mm-hmm. and then kennedy changes their name to lana myers yeah because they wanted to have a fresh start not connected to that tragedy and it was supposed to be like hard to get, right? Like that. Yeah. The fact that she switched her name. Mm-hmm. But the fact that Jake and Lana 
are able to conceal that shit so well. Because mm-hmm. even when um, Hadley had came in, the FBI agent, Lana was, although she was nervous, she wasn't scared. She was like, what do you mean? Mm-hmm. Like, she was always so composed. And it was kind of funny how she was like, any chance she's a killer so that I can kill her or like, <laughs> or like get rid of her or something. Mm-hmm. So she basically scares off Hadley because it's like, I went through this shitty life situation and you're over here trying to accuse me. Go ahead. Tell Logan mm-hmm. and see what happens. Tell mm-hmm. him that I'm rich. Tell him that this, tell him that that. But the only thing that's going to change is when I wanted to tell him. Mm-hmm. And so she ends up not telling Logan. But like, like I said, that whole boogeyman shit is going on. And the boogeyman is going after Logan specifically now. Mm-hmm. And one scene I want to talk about is the whole car chase scene where they're going to get the boogeyman, but they cross paths with him instead. Mm-hmm. And then there's a car accident and Hadley gets hurt. And so does Lisa which is Logan's ex. Mm -hmm. And then when all that happens, Lana was at home and she was watching it all on TV. So she ran over to the crime scene to go save Logan. Yeah. And then Logan got really mad at her and was like, what the fuck are you doing here? The boogeyman's going to see you and know that I care about you. You can't just come up here and like hug me and kiss me and whatever. And then she gets super mad and is like, fuck you. Mm -hmm. I'm breaking up with you. Yeah. How'd you feel about that? She f- she's really sloppy. Right? Like, she's super sloppy. Like, even from the very beginning, like, she, fo- she feels very sloppy to me. So it's surprising how far she's able to get through her list before, you know, more people are realizing who she is. I don't think I would use the word sloppy. I think I would use, like, she's very tunnel vision Mm -hmm. because she like sees no consequence in any of her actions Mm -hmm. which is weird for a serial killer to not see but i feel like a lot of serial killers are very narcissistic and they don't really believe like they'll ever be caught Mm -hmm. so i guess it kind of makes sense but you remember jake told her that too it was like you told me that when you start getting too cocky i have to call it out oh yes because they knew they knew everything that could happen Mm -hmm. but the fact that they broke up I didn't get it. Like, for someone who said, like, this guy is my entire life. Oh, Mm -hmm. my God. I've never felt this way. To just breaking up. Mm -hmm. That didn't feel realistic to Lana. At least to me. Yeah. What happened? I'm trying to remember what happened after this. After the whole boogeyman thing, she basically goes home. Doesn't she? She goes home and Logan comes and is like, hey, babe, I'm sorry. Do you forgive me? And she's like, babe, I was never mad at you mm. I, that was a joke babe I was kidding babe even though i i did crash your car <laughs> it's okay babe yes you have flat tires sorry about that <laughs> <laughs> but he's like i love you no he whoa whoa doesn't say that yet That's but best. he's like i care about you and i just want you to be safe and one thing that would really make me feel better is if you allowed some police officers to just spend the night here to basically watch her and make sure that nothing happens to her. And then to Lana, she's like, oh, yeah, that's great. You know, them just hearing me in my murder room. <laughs> like, <laughs> living in shit. Like, oh, yeah, that that's great. If they look too closely, they might see something. Mm-hmm. But then one of the officers, his name is Duke. Mm-hmm. They allow him to stay. And there's like a bunch of shit with him. But he he's not a bad guy. He's just there to help. Mm-hmm. And it's funny because he's over here trying to teach her how to protect herself and she's pretending she doesn't know how Uh but they mentioned like if only he were to be a little more perceptive he would notice that i'm not even sweating yeah you know so she's being protected Mm -hmm. the last thing that happens in this book this is book two was the fact that hadley i don't remember how she pieced it together but oh no she had she had a intuition where she was like, I feel like Lana is not who she says she is. Mm-hmm. Like, there's something about her, and I want to go check. So then she goes to Lana's house to go see what's up. And she, the house is empty. And she makes it to the room, the murder room. Mm-hmm. But she doesn't know that she has to move the bookshelves in order to open the secret door. Mm-hmm. But she gets in there, and the boogeyman who had broken into Lana's house attacks her. 
and says his his line where he's like, "You afraid of the boogeyman?" And oh then my hits, god, that's so cringe. Hits Hadley, and then ties Hadley up, and she's freaking out because she thinks she's gonna die, and then puts her like at the end of the hall and is like, "I want you to watch me kill this bitch. I mm. want you to watch." Mm-hmm. And so then he moves, and Lana comes in. He comes behind Lana, hits her, and is like, "You afraid of the boogeyman?" And then Lana just cracks up. Like, <laughs> this bitch? Oh, my God. Uh-huh. And then he, like, is trying to hit her. And she's like, oh, missed. <laughs> you know, like, completely dodging him. Yeah. And then she starts talking about, like, I, I just don't know how to make this look believable. Like, maybe if you punch me a few times. And he does. Like, he allows him or he allows, she allows him to hit to her. Hit. Yeah. And she gets a few bru- bruises. And she's like, yeah, that looks real enough. And then he's like completely confused because it's like, why are you laughing? Yeah. And she goes fucking feral on him, Mm -hmm. like bruises this bitch up. Yeah. And then starts just talking to herself and monologues. Mm -hmm. She does the villain monologue, which is so funny because she doesn't consider herself psychotic, but she does everything a villain would do. Yeah. You know what I mean? So like her being her. She's like, you know what? I'm doing to you what I do to all those men I kill. I humiliate them. I make them this. I'm like, if only I can cut off your penis. But I can't. Yeah, the, the whole cutting off the penises was basically like her her move, her, her. go-to. But I guess with the boogeyman, she was like, I shouldn't do that because then they're going to piece it together. It's too oh, obvious. Oh, my gosh. But then she starts telling the boogeyman, like, I have no soul and I have no heart. And I'm going to fucking kill you, bitch. Mm -hmm. And he's getting scared, but he's like, but, you know, for someone who's had no heart, I just love Logan. And you're fucking with him right now, so I'm going to fuck you up. Like, he (laughs) keeps saying that. And Hadley (laughs) is sitting at the end of the hallway, and she's like, I... I'm sorry, I'm just picturing her having a whole monologue and Hadley just sitting there like, what Oh my the, god. What the fuck? I fucking she's like, knew it. She's like, who am I scared of? Him or her? <laughs> I wonder how she did it. And then fucking Lana, I did it with a knife. <laughs> like just answering all the questions. Uh-huh. But Hadley's over here watching and she's like, okay. From the looks of it, it seems like Lana is crazy (laughs) and she did kill these men but she's also a victim yeah but she's like but what do i do she's gonna see me in here Mm -hmm. do i turn her in do i fight her like what do i do (laughs) and then when she's like oh by the way and i love logan bitch and then kills the boogeyman she's like i can't oh i can't she loves logan wait a minute wait sure (laughs) she did It's like, sure, she kills a couple of people, like, but she loves Logan. Oh. Logan will never forgive me. <laughs> if I turn in her murderous, his murderous girlfriend, he will not buy me lunch tomorrow. And I'll be so sad about it. She'll never talk to me again. <sighs> <laughs> what do you think? I don't. <laughs> to what do you me? think about the fact that Hadley did not turn her in? <sighs> I wasn't sure, like, where this story was going. Like, some of these situations just felt so, I don't know, I guess unrealistic. I mean, not that I would ever understand the situation. Mm -hmm. But, like, the whole, like, her derailing her plans and, like, focusing on the boogeyman because of Logan. Like, yeah, sure, that's cute, I guess. But, But I don't know. Like, Lana, to me, like, I don't understand this whole fixation with Logan. Why? I don't know. Like, I just don't, I don't get it. Like, okay, it's cute, sure, but I kind of wish it would have happened slower. Like, I just wish it would have happened, like, in a more meaningful way. And then I would have understood, like, okay, she's so into him because he loves every bit of her, every piece of her. You know what I mean? That's kind of funny because I felt like in book one, two, and three, that's where I most liked Lana and Logan's relationship. Really? Because it was where we saw the most of their relationship, where it was yeah. like the, I want to stay here and talk to you, but I can't. Oh my gosh, you almost got killed by the boogeyman. I'm not caring enough about mm-hmm. you. Oh my gosh, I yelled at you. I'm so sorry. And then yeah. even Lana going like, well, she doesn't really do much in the <laughs> Not really. She- but she's over here like accepting the new paths that her relationship is taking, mm-hmm. you know? So I didn't mind it. 
Yeah. But I don't understand how an FBI agent mm-hmm. didn't just go like, nope. It's like, wait, how mm-hmm. did you, how are you able to get the upper hand? Hmm. Yeah. I need I need a whole play by play. <laughs> and f- for me, what I do like about this book is I like that it has a plot. Yeah. You know, like there's a plot attached to the romance cuz that kept me engaged and it uh, to me it was interesting. Mm-hmm. I just wish that the romance more more so in the beginning would have been a little bit stronger. I disagree. Really? <laughs> I disagree. I think it was fine. Really? It didn't bother me at all. Okay. So after the boogeyman is, uh-uh, he's dead. Okay. Um, he, they basically can't stay at Lana's house anymore. It's so funny because after she kills the boogeyman, she walks around and is just kind of like, damn, he bled all over my <laughs> shit. And looks through, like fucking loots the man. <laughs> he has $10. She's like, oh, going to save that for later. But she like looks. It's not his like stuff. he needs it. I know. <laughs> looks through his stuff. It turns out he has like a control that like jams all the cell phones, mm-hmm. and she's just like, "Oh no wonder my Wi-Fi didn't work. Now I can't watch. <laughs> now I can't watch my makeup tutorials." <laughs> and then she just looks at the body and is like, "What the fuck do I do?" So she grabs the knife, and then to herself, she's like, "What does a normie girly do when she kills someone?" Like, do I just, uh, do I cry? Like, she doesn't know how to act. It's funny. This I'm like, at Hadley seeing her, and she's just like, I'm going to try to cry. <laughs> she's just staring in the mirror like, okay, okay. <sighs> dead puppies, dead puppies. <laughs> can't cry. Bitch can't cry. Mm. Okay, what what else do normie girls do? Scream and run outside and scream? Yeah. Nah. Mm. Nah, it's too far. I can't do that. Also, I don't want to just leave my door open. It's going to cause a draft. So yeah. no. So then she's like, okay, I know what to do. I'm going to grab the knife and sit down and just blank stare and not react. Because I'm in tra- traumatic moment, bitch. Mm-hmm. And so then... The, Lana became an actress. <laughs> I know. So then the, the police officers come in. Or no, I think Craig comes in, which is one of the FBI agents. Mm-hmm. And she's just sitting there. And she's seeing them walk around, and she's like, hurry up, bitch. Like, I don't know how long I'm supposed to sit here. Yeah. They react. You know, they go up to her and like, are you okay? And her reaction wants to be, like, smiling at them, like, yeah, I'm fine. But she's like, gotta hold it, bitch. Mm-hmm. Gotta hold Hollywood, bitch. And then. She's like, suddenly I don't want to kill anymore. I want to be an actress. I want to go to Hollywood. And then she hears one of them go, oh, Hadley's back here, tied up. Wait a minute. She's like, wait, wait, wait Hadley? Wait, wait, wait. How like, she she breaks the trance. She like turns all the way around. Wait a minute! Can you hold this for me? It's like the knife. Hadley? How long has she been there? How long? Hadley? Were you taking a little siesta? Yeah. Were you taking a little nappy back there? Mm. No, wide awake, bitch. Oh, but like the Hadley's like the walls I saw are heavy, saw right? Everything, mm. bitch. I saw I saw your monologue. Embarrassing. <laughs> <laughs> I know I could have written a better monologue, bitch. But then, like, she's, Lana's, like, more devastated at the fact that she will not have Logan anymore. Mm-hmm. So it now is frozen for a different reason. Mm-hmm. She's so she's here. actually traumatized yeah, so now. Holding the knife. So then um, Hadley comes out and Hadley was like, yeah, I saw everything. Um, she defended herself so well. Lana was so good. You should see- and then she looks at her. She's like, you fucking know you yeah, owe me it was crazy because like the the boogeyman was like cut off my penis and lana was like i would never <laughs> ever touch a man's penis in a way that is not if it's not logan i'm beautiful. not touching it I know. it was so crazy and then she prayed for like 10 minutes after oh my god she's a beautiful woman <laughs> weird right that's so weird that's not how i would have pictured imagine there's like cameras inside it's like wait we can look at the security system no that's weird too because the boogeyman actually wanted to recreate a scene from his own screenplay so she acted with him because she's so nice she's so nice and she might have said she's a killer she's not it's it's fine she said don't check her murder room there's nothing in there what's a murder no she her makeup room because she really murdering that look come on so true oh gosh and lana's like what why the fuck is hadley covering for me Mm -hmm. so then um they all end up staying at a hotel hadley stays at a hotel because she's too scared to go home and then logan and lana stay at a hotel because lana's 
room is like her house is completely bloodied. Mm-hmm. So they're staying at this hotel and fucking Logan, I thought his point of view was so funny because he'd be like, I have to protect her. Mm-hmm. She's never once killed a man and I just I just feel like <laughs> <laughs> it's so funny because to him he's like you know killing someone really changes a person <laughs> she must be going through a he's lot so sm- <laughs> i remember my first time and she's like yeah me too bitch i, I mean uh, uh, <laughs> I mean, uh weird yeah uh, no which was yesterday <laughs> yeah you know, when I cut off his penis, I mean, no, that wasn't the, I mean, I, I'm not going to confuse it with something else, of course. I've never cut off a penis, but if I did, I know how to cut it, of course. <laughs> I know which angle. <laughs> like, it was crazy to me that Logan was over here like, I love my, I love my bitch. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to protect her. And she's over here like, I'm just trying to go to sleep. Yeah. And the next day when she wakes up, uh, they're basically, they have to be relocated for some reason. And so she needs to go talk to Hadley. And, or he needs to talk to Hadley. And she was like, can I talk to her? Because, you know, trauma sisters. Um, yeah, I just feel like for life. I just feel like I, I should go talk to her. So she goes down to Hadley's room and she's sitting there with a gun pointing it at Lana and is like, I will shoot you mm-hmm. if you think about hurting anyone who's innocent. Mm-hmm. And Lana's like, I only take the dick of the evil. Mm-hmm. <laughs> like, I'm, I'm a good ass bitch. And so then she sits with Hadley and basically tells her what happened to her. Mm -hmm. Do you remember what happened to her? So basically her father was accused of abusing someone. Mm -hmm. And the boys of the neighborhood took it upon themselves to hurt the dad by hurting his children. Because I think at this point, did the dad already allegedly? He He went to prison and then he allegedly killed himself. Yes. And so the boys of the neighborhood took Lana, whose real name is Victoria, and her brother Marcus, and they basically, like, tortured them. They sexually assaulted them. The whole, like... In the middle of the street. Yeah, in the middle of the street. And then the whole, like, thing was so fucking, like... There's just so much happened. It was disgusting. It was disgusting. And, like, they wanted Marcus to hurt her. Mm-hmm. Basically. And it was just like there was a mirror there. They wanted like the brother to see what they were doing to her, to the sister. They broke her so much that she was unrecognizable too. Like she was just a pulp. Yeah. Basically being hurt by 13 boys. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And she explained the story to Hadley. And she basically told Hadley like all of these people need to pay because when it happened... The FBI agent who helped with the case Mm -hmm. did not bother to scope out more. It's because the family members are like somehow connected to the Mm -hmm. the people who are in the law enforcement. Yes. And so nobody wanted to really be honest about what happened. And so they kind of just allowed this crime to happen. Yep. And Hadley throws up during this story. Yeah. She's like holding a wastebasket and throwing up. And then she's like, I'm not going to tell anyone because this is your twisted way of making things right. But Mm -hmm. if you are not hurting any innocent and if what you feel for Logan is real, Mm -hmm. then I can't stop you doing this. Mm -hmm. And she's like, oh, yeah, me and Logan. Close, bitch. (laughs) Every single love till the end. We're so close, bitch. Of mm-hmm. course, I love him. And she's like, okay, well, I cannot, you know, yeah, do anything. I think it's so weird, though, that, like, throughout this whole story, Hadley and Lana have these little looks where it's like, did you murder, did you murder <laughs> that bitch? Was it you? Oh, my God, you know? Yeah. I think it's funny, though, because... Even Lana says that she's never had any girlfriends. Yeah. So it's interesting to finally have one. have one and have her know what she does and yeah. then have her like accept it pretty much. Yeah. And like, but to me, what, what was weird is for someone, for two girls, women who were able to like do those looks in front of the FBI agents and no one caught anything, mm-hmm. you know, it was just like, oh, just Hadley and Lana. But then didn't she do something for her, too? 
she oh, yeah. caught she one of the people that she killed had like a whole thing of pictures but do you remember why she killed that person she wanted to blow off steam after breaking up with oh Logan. yeah she so did. she so she went to jake which is her right hand man and was like give me a bad bitch to kill Give Literally me anyone. quick anybody closest range. Yeah, and, and she goes to kill this person. And in this like chest or whatever it is that he had, he had a whole like like seventy Polaroids and, and seventy nails because they were all hung up. Mm-hmm. And she saw Hadley's picture, meaning that Hadley had been like it was like child trafficking. Yeah, right? yeah, and and Hadley had tried to to tell people about it, but nobody believed her mm-hmm. when she was young, when this happened. And it's crazy because. Lana kills this guy and he's a big guy. Mm -hmm. So then um, when they're talking about it, she's like, how did you even kill him? She was like, well, I mean, the killing part was easy. But having to carry that man into the water and they Mm kind of joke. It's a morbid joke. But even Hadley laughs. Mm -hmm. So the fact that they're bonding over like the murder of someone that both of them disliked. Yeah. Oh, my God. But um hadley but she got basically she got rid of the photo of hadley's photo yes. because she didn't want her to see herself like that and she didn't want the fbi to see hadley that way and also she said that some people can't handle visual memories mm-hmm. like and there's no reason for you to go through that again and i like how she says that because it comes back to her later but she and hadley besties I, and it's funny because she's leaving and it's like, well, where are you going? Because, you know, Hadley's interested now. This is a serial killer. Mm-hmm. And she's like, going to buy Lou, bitch. <laughs> See you later. <laughs> and Hadley's like, oh, she's my like, God. Imagine she was like, I'm going to buy some lube and some rope. Not for the same person. <laughs> <laughs> no, but could be for the same person. God, can you imagine being the person working at that fucking Target? It's like peppermint lube, like serrated knives. <laughs> And like a sprite. It's like, shh, shh, shh. don't tell anyone. <laughs> Our little secret bitch. Uh-huh. Um, but she goes to kill her next person. This one's gruesome. I think this one is Anthony. And it was someone who... Is this the one where she's like peeling the the skin? No, this is the one for with the guy who um, forced her to enjoy her assault. So it was really gentle with her so she could oh, enjoy it. Oh, I remember this. Yeah. And so then he, she was kind of gentle with him in mm-hmm, a way. Mm-hmm. And he was turned on while she was in the middle of murdering him and cut off his penis. And I thought it was funny how the whole time she was cutting off, she was like, wow, look at it. It's like, look at that shit. That yeah. shit hard. Yeah. That's crazy. And it came off and there was more blood than usual. And she's like, interesting. Uh, yeah. <sighs> She's all taking she's notes. She's like, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say that. She was taking notes. She's like, okay, with this case subject. That's, it was insane to me that she just did this shit. And then she got the penis. And so that it wouldn't run away. She, she <laughs> nailed it to fuck? the floor. And it was like, there you go, bitch. Yeah. Dude, she did messed up shit. Do you remember the one where she killed two people next to each other, cut off their penises and put it in each other's mouths and sewed it shut? Yeah. Lana really, Lana's really Lana creative, did. you know? She's really... Lana. Lana. Can you imagine if midway through Lana was like, wait a minute, I, I don't want to kill anymore. Oh, I thought you were going to say, I just had an idea. <laughs> <laughs> Draws out her like penis sketchbooks. Like, you know, she just has a lot. Fucking Logan sees it. She's like, it's just art. It's just it's art. It's just art. Don't I just love art. <laughs> Um, oh my god. She How did you feel? Well, you didn't answer the question. How did you feel about Hadley and Lana's relationship? I didn't like it. No. I cuz to me I don't understand why she justified it. And I know she went through a shitty situation, and I kind of like the part where Lana was like, "That is not your trauma to bear. Mm-hmm. Go ahead and call your parents and your psychiatrist and tell them the shitty situation that actually happened." Don't for- forgive them uh-huh. and leave it with them. And uh-huh. that's kind of her showing, like, you need to take charge. Uh-huh. And it, in a way, it's supposed to justify what she's doing. Mm-hmm. But I don't understand how an FBI agent mm-hmm. can justify killing. Like, that's the part that doesn't make any sense to me. 
What do you mean? I'm surprised she didn't push it more. I think I think Hadley accepted it too quickly. Mm. It's all right. It's good. I feel like it made sense to me, though, especially because she had gone through something and especially because mm. she didn't get any justice either. and Nobody believed her. Yep. And so she was able to understand Lana and why she would do that, because I feel like in a way she probably was like. Yeah, I mean, I also wanted revenge, but I would never. If she knew that she was going to be okay with Lana doing this, though, I wish that she would have quit mm. and been like, I'm emotionally compromised. I can't do my job. I feel like she she probably wanted to stay close to she wanted the to know. situation. Yeah. yeah. And it's kind of funny, too, because even though Lana had told her, you know, they they would go back and fucking Hadley would be at work figure out what Lana had just done. Like, Mm -hmm. oh, yeah, it was weird. We found a place with lube. She's like, and Sprite and a roll? (laughs) Exactly that? Mm -hmm. But she would hear about it and then go to Lana. She's like, how'd you do that, bitch? And she would tell her some stuff, but she's like, but the other one? You figure that out. Yeah. Because that was my favorite part. Like, she would want her to figure out how she was able to do certain things. Mm -hmm. I thought that was pretty cool. Because isn't her, isn't Hadley's role, like, to solve like puzzles yeah like not literal puzzles but like how were they able to do this Mm -hmm. she's the hacker yeah i think by the end of this book it's basically logan basically finds a connection between these killings that lana's doing because now she has a name by the way the killer has a name Mm -hmm. the scarlet skyler Mm -hmm. i think um, wants to figure out how Lana's murders or he figures out that Lana's murders are very s- similar to something that had happened a very long time ago mm-hmm. and it was with um the dad's one right mm-hmm. so like the Evans family which is Lana's family and what had happened with him and the fact that there was no justice there Mm -hmm. so then um he's like oh this makes sense that means we have to go to delaney grove Mm -hmm. and then hadley is like lana going to delaney grove let's go Mm -hmm. and convinces logan like you need to take your girlfriend with you because she just can't be here alone she killed the boogeyman it was very traumatic for her and lana yeah really traumatic Mm -hmm. (laughs) but um they take her and that's where book four and five starts they're at delaney grove Dude, there was so much story in this for, for a novella. Yeah, I know. I was, uh, but I was invested. I was like, okay, I'm at Delaney Grove. <laughs> What's happening? What's next, bitch? I just like, this is where I was more into the story and figuring out what happened than Lana and Logan's relationship. Because mm. I feel like at this point, by the way, by this point, they had said I love you to each other. And yeah. it was, um, and they were gonna be together forever. It was allegedly. It was kind of weird because he had heard her say it, mm-hmm. and then he said it afterwards, like after sex, I think. And she repeated it and was like, "Oh my god, they love each other." I think he just wanted to make sure, you know. He was like, "Let me get this out of my system." Yeah, I still love you. Okay. Yeah. Wait. Hold on. Mm, yeah. Carry the two. Yeah, I still <laughs> love you, but. Doesn't it kind of feel like afterwards their relationship just kind of became having sex and then when they were with each other or around people, they would just, I held on to her waist Mm -hmm. or she sat on my lap or... It became more of just like comforting touches. Yeah. And not really anything happening. And I understand that he was in the middle of his like solving this case, Mm -hmm. but there was was nothing... No, but there was, like, nothing being done to, like, continue to hold on to this relationship. That was the whole reason that she came to Delaney Grove with him, too, because, well, in his eyes, mm-hmm. was to be there for Lana. But he's over here, like, not doing shit mm-hmm. to even comfort her. Comfort her. Yeah, that's true, huh? Like, does he not really? Well, he, in his mind, mm-hmm. she's probably going through a lot. Yeah. But then... I don't know. Anytime they met up, it was just for sex. And I hated that. I hated that there was never moments where they sat together and just talked. Mm -hmm. Because that's all I wanted. No, because then a confession would come out. What if I accidentally killed someone? 
It's like instead of B, would you still love me if I was a worm? It's B, would you still love me if I was a serial killer? <laughs> that was also a worm. <laughs> like, would you? <laughs> would you though? Oh my gosh! But I kind of wish they would have had a like a hypothetical conversation. Mm. Like, well, if you were the killer, what would you have done? Why would you have done it? Mm. And like him being like, well, this is how I would have justified it if I was a killer. You know, like can shit I, like that. Can I say something? Controversial? No. Like, can I... I don't know how fast we want to go, but I feel like we're... We've been talking for a while. Um, yeah. I hate how he finds out that she's the killer. Because doesn't he hear it from somebody else? Where they're like, yes, she is the killer. But hear her out, though. Well, what he hears is from craig mm-hmm. no it's not craig it's another one i don't but remember who it was but it's somebody- it was someone who was like i need you to sit down for this one mm-hmm. Logue, Logue. can i call you Logue? <laughs> you've never called me Logue. it's never not even log that. it's Logue. Know. again can i call you <laughs> i just need you to know that the night that robin evans died so did someone else called someone kennedy and someone kennedy robin should we be Victoria? No, Ro- Robert Evans. That was the death name. So the night Rob... Or no, you're right. Because right. she, the, the she night- was pronounced dead. Yes. So that night that that big weird murder thing happened with the Evans siblings. Mm-hmm. Um, Where they were both basically tortured to death. Somewhere else, there was someone who went through a traumatic experience, a car crash. Their name was Kennedy. Mm-hmm. And Kennedy... Um, is working with Jacob, which is Jake, who they started a trading company with. And Kennedy has legally changed their name to Lana Myers. Mm -hmm. And in Logan's mind, he's like, oh my gosh, this is someone who's doing murder by proxy, like revenge murder by proxy. So he believed that Lana was Kennedy and not Victoria Evans, not the one who went through the traumatic experience. Mm -hmm. And was so obsessed with that story that she decided to take it upon herself to kill everyone that hurt the Evans kids. So then, obviously, Logan is mad. Mm-hmm. He goes like, "You're killing it, tell me. <laughs> you know that's Maybe, my job, but... babe. No, you know, I'm embarrassed. You know how embarrassing it is to be in love with a serial killer." <sighs> so I totally forgot this happened. This is the part of the story. Where I was like, I'm never going to forgive him. Oh, yes. I know what you're talking about. So, so he, basically, he confronts her. Yes. And she's in her room or in a hotel room. I can't remember. She's in the cabin room because they're in Delaney. They're oh, in yeah, the yeah. And so he comes in and he starts like being very aggressive with her. Well, first kissing her. Mm. But then it becomes aggressive kisses. Mm-hmm. And she was like, what's going on? But it progresses. And it definitely crossed the line. Yes. But in her mind, she was like, he knows. He knows what happened. Then this is him saying goodbye. Yes. And in her in her mind, she's also like, but I kind of deserve it. So, you know, and she accepts it, mm-hmm. which is horrible. Yeah. Um, They finish. I don't know how to say it. Yeah, he finishes. <laughs> he finishes and then um, mm. looks at her and is like, I can't believe you lied to me. I can't believe I've been dating the killer that I've been looking for. Mm-hmm. And she tries to explain herself because because he says, I think he even mentions like you're Kennedy. You're just killing people mm. because of your weird perversion with this murder case. No, he doesn't explain it because she doesn't know. Oh, you're right. Because somebody right. explains it to her later. Or he explains you're it right. to so her You're right. So he later. just says, I know that you're killing people mm-hmm. and your weird perversion with this case. Mm-hmm. And then um, she tries to explain herself and he just covers her mouth and silences her. Uh-huh. And that triggers her because she was like, out of all the people, I never thought that he would be the one to silence me. Mm-hmm. And he leaves to Hadley and um, explains what happened to Hadley. And Hadley was like, that's not Kennedy. That's Victoria Evans. Yeah. And you dumbass. And he's like, aren't you supposed to be <sighs> the best FBI here? This is embarrassing. Wait a minute. That's Victoria? 
Wait, Tori? Wait. So he thought that she was Kennedy and was just obsessed with the case. Yeah. So in his mind, he was like, oh, she's just crazy. But now she's not crazy. Well. <laughs> no, she's not. It's like you were part of the case. You were just defending yourself, baby. Baby. <laughs> baby. Mm. And he feels so bad. <laughs> okay. And How then- do you feel? I hated this part. Wait, tell tell me before this part happened, mm. were you down? For the couple? Yeah. Yeah, I had liked them at this point. But then when that happened, it threw me. Well, first of all, I hate, again, I hated how he found out. Because I didn't like that he didn't, like, crack it himself, you know? Yeah. You know what I wanted? Ugh. This is what I wanted so fucking go bad. Ahead, go ahead. Like, go I ahead. wanted him to get to, like, wherever it is that she's committing a murder and see her in the act. I wanted that so fucking bad. Like, I wanted him to see her and her being like, uh, 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 wait. Mid dick cut. Wait, babe, hold on. Wait, 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 I'm going. Sorry, I forgot to I forgot to sharpen this. I know. It's, he's hard. And I actually have notes on this. If they get hard, it's harder, babe. Sorry, babe. Uh, I wanted that so bad. So the fact so that he found out through somebody else pissed me yeah, off. Yeah, that's true. And then the fact that he like just takes advantage of her in that moment, like it gave me the ick. Like, I don't know. Like to me, that me was abusing her. It is. Um, And then the fact that everyone just kind of like, okay, it's fine. It's not a big deal. It's whatever. I didn't like that part at all. Well... I'm not even going to go into the specifics, but basically Jake and Lana. Oh, my God. I blanked. Victoria. So basically Jake and Lana are terrorizing the Delaney Grove town Mm -hmm. by getting paint that shows up at random times Mm -hmm. with heat. And it's like telling the town, like, you guys fucked up. You didn't tell anyone about us. And Mm -hmm. now all of you are going to suffer. Yeah. And the town's like not opening their mouths at all. But as soon as Lana kills the main person everyone hates who is connected to the governor of the town or the mayor of the town and basically runs all the money and everything and owns the whole town. Mm -hmm. As soon as that kid dies, everyone comes forward. Mm -hmm. And he's like, no, yeah, I saw it. No, yeah, everyone knows about it. Yeah. And it's like they were quiet for so long. And it, it wasn't until that moment that they decided to finally speak on this. Yep. So then... um. Lana starts leaving messages that are specifically to Logan and was like, you don't understand. They hurt me. Mm-hmm. Bitch. XOXO. But she <laughs> she would leave the notes like in the crime. Yeah. Like like at the crime scene. Yeah, at the crime scene. And it was like, oh my God. wait, is she talking and to you? And the worst person she killed, she skinned them. Yeah. Like completely. They were just bone. Mm. That was crazy. Yeah, it was crazy. I thought it was funny how one of the guys was like, I hope Tyler's not still alive. And he's like, trust me, that bitch is dead. <laughs> that bitch is so dead. But um, there's like a point where she goes to a place and the person she was going to kill was about to kill their her his wife and kids. And she saves them by killing them. Uh-huh. And then allows them to run away. And mm-hmm. the FBI actually takes them to a safe space. And that's when Logan's like, yeah, we're going to we're gonna go. Bye. Closes the door, like pretends to leave. Lana comes out and he's like, surprise, bitch. But then he, they reignite the flame. <laughs> uh-huh. And the passion's there. And they kiss again. And you know what, babe? It's okay. I so I forgive you for killing everybody. Mm-hmm. It's okay. You know what's something I appreciate in stories like this? Mm. And I it happens in multiple stories that we've currently read, mm. like Divine Rivals or Serpent or um even the story that we just finished talking about the mistletoe motive. This is going to be so out of order. So if we haven't talked about that. Mm. But one thing I really appreciate is when characters are going through so much, but they have to be like, can we Forget the world exists for a bit mm-hmm. and just be us mm-hmm. and what we were. And that's what they do. They yeah. like go to wherever she's hiding out with Jake 
And it's funny because Hadley's also there, uh-huh. like fucking having sex with Jake. And uh-huh. it's like, okay, that's another can of worms. I'm just going to leave that one there. We don't have time for that. <laughs> but then um, Logan and Lana are just laying down after having had sex. But they're just laying down. And Logan is like, tell me something about yourself. And she was like, okay. So my first kill, I was like, no, 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 no. I want you to tell me about who you were. He's like, baby, I already know your first kill. <laughs> But he was like, I want you to tell me who you were before that traumatic event happened to you. Mm. And then she's like thinking about it because she's like, that person is dead. You know, that person doesn't exist. And Logan's like, that person made you who you are. And although you feel like they're dead, that person is still inside you. So then she's quiet and she's like, my parents, when I was younger, used to dance like every single night. Mm -hmm. And they would... It, they would sometimes get caught by me. I would watch them. And mm-hmm. instead of, you know, yelling at me, they would let me join. And Jake, who's her right-hand man, grew up with them. And Marcus, you know, Marcus is the brother of Lana. And they would all dance together. Mm-hmm. And that was just something that they did. And she was like, yeah, I always thought that that's what love was. And love was going to be easy to find in this world. And so then Logan gets up and puts on music and they start dancing. Mm-hmm. So I, it's hard because like, I don't agree at all with Alana's perspective on anything because there's multiple times in this story where people are like, you're having a psychotic break. Mm-hmm. And she's like, no, I'm not. I'm good. And they're like, oh my gosh, she's good. And it's like, <laughs> don't they know that that's a thing with people who are psychopaths? Mm-hmm. Like they are very manipulative towards situations. She could be in the middle of her psychotic break, but she knows exactly how to answer to you because she's psychotic. Yeah. And it it like is confusing to me that none of the FBI agents get that. And when... um. FBI agent Johnson, which is the one who let this case go to shit earlier and the one that Lana wants to kill, when he takes it over and tells Logan he can't be part of it because he's emotionally compromised and Logan's like, no, because I love her. It's like, bitch, (laughs) you've been an FBI agent. You know how that shit works. Yeah. Like, it sucks that, you know, this this is a situation for you and we all feel bad for you, but you still... There's no right for you to be here right now. Mm. But he still says no. And I'm just so angry at that. So at this point, I was just kind of like, I don't get me wrong. I loved reading this story. Mm -hmm. But at this point, I was like, he assaulted her. Mm -hmm. And she's a killer. And now they're just good. Mm -hmm. Now they're just like, yeah, it's fine. And like I said, I love parts of stories when it's like they escape the real world for a second to go back to it later. Yeah. But it's just the fact that like nothing was said, Mm -hmm. you know? Nothing meaningful. Yeah. Like what would you have wanted? Uh, I think. Ideally, if if you were to have written this book, how do you think it should have ended? Well, I don't think the assault should have happened have happened right. at all but i like i said or like you said i i kind of agree that i wish he would have been the one to see it mm-hmm. and i wish instead of like him running out on her it would have just been like come walk with me let me show you and him just on his toes but then realizing like this is the woman that i love and she went through some shitty stuff mm-hmm. but then throughout the whole story having had them talk about like well, what makes a good and a bad person? Mm-hmm. You know, does killing make you a bad person? Yeah, because I felt I feel like they'd never really discussed that, mm-hmm. like whether or not she is a good person or not. Yep. They I have. think only maybe with Hadley, but not really too much in in detail. Hadley just didn't care though. Hadley yeah. was just like, "Yeah, I'm here." By the way, Logan. Logie. But there was a moment where, where she does think, or I don't know if she says it to her, I can't remember, but she says something like, yeah, I mean, you're doing what they didn't do for me. Yeah, she does say it out loud. <sighs> I don't know. Because near the end of the story. Yeah, what happens at the end? Let's just get to the end. So, so the can... end of the story, Logan's like, you could just run away with me. Mm-hmm. They talked about running away to Greece. 
And they were like, let's just start fresh. We can leave all this behind. But she can't. She, she can't, can't do she it. Can't. Because I think, didn't she promise her brother? Yeah. she And her brother also, also, for someone who she said Marcus was everyone's joy in this world. He was everyone's happiness. Nothing wrong with that boy. But he did leave me a message. It says, go kill everyone, bitch. I got to do it. Good luck. <laughs> and it's like, why, if your brother cared enough, he wouldn't have done that to you? So that, to me, felt very unlike Marcus, how they painted him, Mm -hmm. to have said that to her. Or maybe that's not what he meant at all, and she misunderstood it. Maybe. But um, I meant don't kill them. I'm so embarrassed. Typo. (laughs) But she basically goes on an all-out killing, not killing spree, but she kicks out the whole town and kills the last person she wanted to kill. And then is basically being gunned down by, like, the police officers and uh, FBI agents and everyone. And she's about to die. And um, Logan sees her final moments, basically, on Mm. screen. But then it shuts off because the person who was in charge of the cameras was Jake and he didn't want to see his friend die. Yeah, because then the place, like, blow up. Mm -hmm. And then Jake and Lana just disappear. And Mm -hmm. it's three months and everyone believes that they're dead. Mm -hmm. So three months later, um, it starts with Logan coming back to work because he had lost the love of his life. So he had to take time off. And Hadley goes up to him and is like, you want to you want to do this? Because I found where they are. Mm -hmm. And he's like, so I quit. Yep. Let's go. Uh Make me disappear, bitch. And he, she does that. She makes them disappear. And they go to basically solve the end of this crime, which was the person who caused the whole thing was Jake's dad. That fucking plot twist. How'd you feel about that plot twist? I didn't see that coming, but I wasn't, like, super happy about it either. Because what, what, basi- what basically happened? It was he, that he, he told a lie. He liked the person that Robert was dating, which was <gasps> oh, Tyler's mom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. And so then he accused him of essaying someone, and that's kind of it. All like it, it kind of like did the whole domino effect. But even then, I was like, I don't really care about this part. The only thing that really came out of this was the fact that Logan was like, it's all your fucking fault that all of this happened. Shoot him in the dick. And then was like, police will come for you. Mm-hmm. And he leaves. And so then they go to where um Lana and Jake are living and they have a cat whose name is Bennett. Bennett. <laughs> that was so cute. <laughs> and cuz Logan's last name is Bennett. And he gets there and is like, you're my whole life, bitch. Ding. I never stop loving you, bitch. Ding. Ding. <laughs> <laughs> and they live happily ever after. The end. Wow. You know what's better? What story? You know what's, but you, cher- I'm going to, little cherry on top. What? Epilogue. Did I even so, read the epilogue? Dude, let me remind you then. <laughs> The epilogue was them years later, already married, Mm. and they're like, I love you so much, babe. Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary, babe. Uh Love you. Bennett, or fuck, Logan is like, you know what, babe? I got you a gift because I love you so much. Mm. And then he opens up, it's like a boat, I think. He opens up the bottom of a boat, and there's a man sprawled out on the floor, and he's like, Okay, Lana, this man um, has been R-wording children all over this island and has no family and no one who will care for him. I love you so much, babe. Do what you got to do. And she, like, grabs her it's knives. Like she goes to her man cave. <laughs> she grabs her knives and he starts backing up and then I think closes the door on her and then thinks to himself, oh. I got myself a quirky wife. I kind of wish. Yeah. I don't think I read that because that's fucking crazy. Yeah. I kind of wish that Logan was characterized a little bit better because that feels like a whole other person to me. He would not have given up the law that easily. I wish he would have been like a vigilante type shit. Yeah. <laughs> same. Because that ending makes it seem like, oh, then you don't care. Yeah. 
Like, I know years have passed by, but this doesn't <sighs> feel right to me. You know what's one conversation I liked, but I wish was pushed more? Which one? There was one character, the one who had revealed that Lana was the killer. Before he revealed it, he had sat with Logan and was like, you know, I have a cousin who is married to a drug dealer or who was married to a drug dealer. Mm -hmm. And he made sure that where he was selling drugs was never in the town she lived in. Mm -hmm. And no one in that town did drugs and he didn't do drugs. And he treated her like a queen. She broke up with him because he was a drug dealer and ended up with an accountant. That accountant like sexually harassed her treated her like shit and almost killed her mm -hmm. who's the evil person in this situation and then logan was like the drug dealer the drug so dealer. you're telling me drug dealers can just get away with shit and he's like you're missing the point mm -hmm. and i that kind of just ended there mm -hmm. like i wish that would have been something he was like like would have stepped back Every, uh, every crime that he was solving and like who's the bad person here mm -hmm. like with the boogeyman it was clearly the boogeyman but then i wish he would have stepped back with lana as in like who's the bad person here yeah like comparing lana to whoever it is that she killed yeah that would have been better but but yeah. you know what i walked into this conversation thinking that you and i were going to be like Five out of five, because that's how I felt at the beginning. Oh, really? But you made me forget Wait. so many things I disliked about this book. I feel like, okay, here's the thing. Yeah. I don't 100% agree with what you were saying in the beginning of this episode, because Lana went through a lot. <laughs> what did I say at the beginning? Where you were like, oh, you shouldn't be judged an executioner, which, yeah, obviously in real life, sure, don't do that. Yeah. But, like, in a book, I'm like, okay, I love a good revenge story. And I feel like we talked about this before. Yeah, I know you do. But I, I do agree with you that she was a little bit too unhinged. I wish that it would have felt like she was a little bit more level-headed or as level-headed as you can be. But I thought that some of those guys did deserve it. <laughs> I... I respect your views on this book, but I still agree with what I said because I think that this just goes to show. But it's supposed to be a dark romance. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> but I mean, if you're thinking about it, just like, like if in we're talking a logical of, yeah, perspective. Like if we're talking about it in real life, that's different. If we were talking about it in real life, this just goes to show that like one person can, can't handle like bringing justice because look at what it does to the person. Yeah. And you know? the, where does it end? But dark romance. <laughs> <laughs> I think that I would have been better. It would have been better if we had seen Logan get to that point. Yeah, I agree. And not just like, oh, it's my, that's my girl, though. That's my girl. Like, yeah, she's a little quirky. Sometimes she cuts dicks off, but not my. <laughs> not mine not yet <laughs> <laughs> they're all like fucking messing around and she's like oh, <laughs> what <am> oh! <laughs> i kind of wish this book was a little bit better i hate i hate it because i was into it when i read it first yeah. but talking about it with you like i feel like damn there especially that moment well i didn't like it when i read it that moment where he like basically like took advantage of her yeah. when he found out who she really was well kind of yeah. or who he thought she was that just like kind of it took me out. It, yeah, it took me out. Like, I couldn't love the book or the series anymore because of that. And the, the fact that she called it hate sex, mm. to me, I was like, no. that's not what it is. No, no, no. Oh, God. What a but journey. It What a journey. It just shows, goes to show, like, how disgusting people can be. And the fact that the whole town did not want to talk about this shit. Yeah, until the very end. Fuck that town. Honestly. It's funny because she called the people that were like living there and she's like, Whitman's, get the fuck out of this town. Yeah. And then they were like, oh shit, okay. I like, would have been I... like, you know what, Whitman's, stay. <laughs> you I'll lock the door you for deserve you. to stay. <laughs> Wait, what was that? You saw what happened hmm. that night and you never said anything? You know what? You should stay inside. Damn, <laughs> lock dude. the doors. I don't know. And also the way that she talked about her murders near the last book and at the beginning of the first book i like the way she acted in the first three books because she talked about it like very methodically mm. you know and she had 
I don't know how to say it, but she 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 seemed more level headed. But near the end mm. of the the last two books, she was just like my dark soul, my soul. She was getting me. careless because yeah, in was. the beginning she would kind of like do them like month month yeah. apart, which is good because and, it had time for her to like cool down from it. Yeah, but then at the end she was like, "Nope, I gotta get this one." Boom, 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 boom. So that's true. She was at her psychotic break. Yeah. That's so crazy to me, too, that her and her friend had thought of everything. Mm -hmm. Like, you're going to experience this. You're going to experience that. They're going to question us about this, this, and this. So we got to know how to answer this, this, and this. Mm -hmm. It's like, damn. How do you guys know all of this? And the the part where, like, because Jake pretended to be in a wheelchair so that they wouldn't suspect him. Mm -hmm. And when they came to interview him... Um, Logan had went to tie his shoe and looked at Jake's shoes and was like, oh, they're clean soles. Like, I would have never thought of that shit. Yeah, I would have never thought about that either. They're like my fucking Crocs, the ones that are all sanded <laughs> down. They're all used and Oh, shit. they're my dad's Crocs. Wait, isn't your dad? Oh! <laughs> Crocs Wait. were invented then. <laughs> oh, shit. Dude. Overall, I love this book so much. I think that Hello? although although I'm not going to give it a five, mm. and although there were parts of this book I disliked, this is the fastest and most, like, into a book I've been in a while. Because mm-hmm. it takes a really long time for me to get into books that are super dense. Mm-hmm. So I was over here like, I'm in Delaney Grove, bit. Like, I know these <laughs> like, characters. Uh, yeah. Fuck Tyler up. Like, I was so fucking into this. So I think... I would recommend it just yeah. to see what people would think about it. Mm-hmm. Love that her name is St. Abby. Stabby, that's so cute. Yeah, it is very clever. Um, I think I would give this a three point seven five out of five. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I think I would agree with you that I did enjoy the book when I was reading it. Like I felt like it was, I was, I was in it. I yep. was just, whoosh, whoosh. but. After discussing it with you, I think I'm right now I'm like around like a three. Just because there was a lot of things mm-hmm. I didn't like about it. I get it. I get it. But it was still enjoyable. And again, I love a good revenge story. Dude, we didn't talk about it, but what about the spice level? Spicy. The spice was kind of not memorable. Okay. <laughs> that was okay. <laughs> it was okay, but I, I wasn't like You weren't like damn Yeah. Five out of five spice. No, yeah, it was just it just happened. Okay. I kind of appreciate that the spice wasn't the main point of the story. Yeah. Even really. though the covers don't give me that vibe though. No, they don't at all. But to those of you who are listening, thank you so much. If um you are listening to us in audio form, whether that be Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Amazon Music, or anywhere you get your podcasts on, if you can please leave a rating of five stars, it literally takes two seconds. Like, by the time I finish this sentence, you could have already given us five stars. <laughs> Crazy. Uh-huh. Um, if you also want to leave a review, you can leave one and recommend us a book. We're almost to the end of the year, but we need books for January. We don't uh-huh. have any. And for the rest of the year, oh my gosh, we read so much. <laughs> so if you want to please do that and to help us, uh, if you want to tell your friends, family, loved ones, anyone about us the best type of exposure is through word of mouth um if they want to help us monetarily what can they do so we do have a patreon and right now it doesn't have a whole lot but we'll get to it you can find us on patreon.com slash book fix but if you don't want that commitment of monthly we do also have a buymeacoffee.com slash the book fix or kofi which is ko-fi.com slash the book fix thank you if you want to support us on social media we do have a we do have an instagram and threads at the book fix pod t-h-e-b-o-o-k-f-i-x-p-o-d and also a TikTok at the book fix T H E B O O K F I X. Just realized I didn't say our YouTube. We're also on YouTube. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if you want to, if you're watching us on YouTube, hello. If you can please like, comment, subscribe, and hit that notification bell because we post every Tuesday and Thursday. Thank you. Why don't we end this episode by reading a positive and a negative comment about this book? <laughs> Oh my god, that top comment. Do you want to read it? Is that the one? (laughs) 
<laughs> it says, I am Alana Myers' apologist. Five out of five. <laughs> I also, uh, we didn't even bring up, why did she pick Myers? Oh, because Michael Myers. Mm, yeah. Spooky ass bitch. Yeah. Sif wrote, I'm not even ashamed to admit that I smiled every time Lana killed one of those motherfuckers. Oh my god, <laughs> these five stars. Okay, find a really good five star and I'll find a one star. <laughs> this one's I found cute. One. <laughs> this one is from Isabel. They gave it five out of five and it says, it's like she took Dexter and Criminal Minds and added in romance and just knew this would reach a very specific target audience. The audience was me, lol. <laughs> This came from Layla, one out of five on Goodreads, and wrote, The fiction was really fictioning with this one. <laughs> okay. Thank you so much for listening, and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Damn, we were talking. <sighs> we really talked. <laughs> I'm Can so we excited. stop talking now? What, <laughs> what did I do? I'm just, just kidding. No, it's okay. I'll Wait, stop. why are you so excited? Is it because we're going to talk about your favorite book, your book of the year? I didn't say that. You were talking about you're your book of the year? You're words in my mouth. Is that why you're so excited? Look me in the eye. No, I can't. Okay, look the at me. The truth in, will in, be revealed. <laughs>